Tokyo Tamotolengi and Rachel Shabi, the author of We Look Like the Enemy, the Hidden Story of Israel's Jews from Arab Lands. Welcome to you both. Uh, Rachel, you first. Uh, who, must, who invented it? Who does it belong to? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a twofold question because you could say that, um, you know, a lot of people think the Ottomans invented it, in which case everyone who lived under Ottoman rule can lay, lay claim to it, and that includes Jews. Uh, and that includes Jews who lived in what was then historic Palestine. But on the other hand, to me, what really gives the game away, what gives Israel's claim uh, the lie, the tell, if you like, is the fact that Israelis are so obsessive about hummus that they actually treat it as a main course, like they end up having hummus for lunch, uh, which for everybody else in the Middle East, and also Palestinians who end up having to watch this and also serve it, they're like, what are you doing? Hummus, is, hummus isn't... Uh, the main event, it's an appetizer. You know, obviously right. the main event is the meat. So to me, that's what really gives away Israel's kind of bogus claim to owning okay, so the, the Israelis or the Arab seasons, not only did they not invent it, they eat it wrong. Yes, I'm not well, uh, I don't think they eat it wrong. I think, I think there is a lot of uh, parallel histories to this food. I mean, some, some writers claim that it, they can read about hummus in the Old Testament. So Jews in Palestine or, is it in or Israel Testament? have eaten something that is, you know, you, know, you never know because it's not called hummus, it's called someone, something else. <laughs> so there is this ongoing debate who ate it first. But this debate on who ate it first is very hard, difficult to solve because nobody knows when it's actually being put together. I mean, you say the Ottomans, some people say it's a bit earlier than some that. Some people say it's God. Yeah, some people say it's God, which I guess that's the best solution. Yeah. But uh, there's also an, argu <coughs> an argument about who makes it the best, and that's another thing. I mean, what is the best hummus restaurant in Israel, in Lebanon? And those are really, really macho arguments. I mean, it's normally well, it's 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 done between, <laughs> done between uh, conducted between men. They sit around a big table, they eat hummus, you know, you, they wipe it with a pita, and they argue what's the best hummus to have. So I think this is actually quite a good way to, argument about, to argue about politics because everybody like hummus, so you can kind of yeah. take the political argument and... and right. uh, where, where do you think hummus. the best hummus is? Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think the political argument is unfortunately inherent in the hummus. I mean, if only we could, you know, live in a world where the politics wasn't part of the hummus. Um, you know, I guess the Lebanese will probably lay stake to the best hummus at the moment, but there are, there are Palestinian uh, places uh, inside Israel itself and also in, in uh, occupied parts. Right. I mean, my Cameron was just saying uh, the best hummus he had was in Nigeria, but made by Lebanese. Uh, well, where you do go. you think you get the best hummus? Well, I, I haven't been to Lebanon, but I think that, that for me, it's all about what you do with the hummus. So, you know, I come, I come to it as, from a yeah. perspective. So, uh, you, don't, you don't play mess around with, me, with it. For me, hummus is chickpeas, tahini, yeah. lemon juice, and garlic. And some people start adding all sorts of things, beetroot or all sorts Mayonnaise. of things. Like, yeah, What's it's that terrible about? things. So for me, it's a pure thing. You know, I feel very strongly about it. And, uh, and I'm how sure chopped does it have to be? Because some of that it looked like the chickpeas were hardly chopped. No, super at all. smooth. But the chickpeas are a garnish, which is something that is very popular both with Lebanese and Israelis and Palestinians and Jordanians and. And, and Egyptians. I mean, some people claim that it actually started in Egypt. And the Egyptians eat hummus with dried broad beans on top, fava beans or full. Um, and it's eaten in other parts of the Middle East, and it's absolutely delicious. And the ingredients, have they always been there, or did any of them come from the New World? <laughs> no, I mean, those, those ingredients are classic, the ones that uh, mm. Yotam just mentioned. You wouldn't want to put anything else in the hummus. First of all, that would totally show you up as a fake. But secondly, it would, it would, completely, it would completely ruin the dish. But I think, you know, apart from, apart from the politics, you know, the reason that hummus, that, that, that it's so important that we're having these kind of hummus wars is that it's about food and it's in the Middle East. So, yeah. you know, of course oh, people well, are going to argue about it, it is, forever. to a certain extent, taking over the world now, isn't it? I mean, yes, it, it, it has popular. completely. Um, I mean, it is the most, the best-selling dip in the Western world. I mean, by far, you know, of, you know. Well, what's it so got to it, compete with? To well, it was coleslaw and terrible Caramel potato salad, salad and all sorts salad. of things. Well, things that come from a little, and that's things what people don't. Things that come in a tub. It's come in a tub in, a, in the fridge in the supermarket, and this is exactly what, how hummus is not eaten in the Middle East. I mean, it, people don't understand that actually hummus is a, is a meal or part of a meze, but it's never refrigerated and eat, it comes from the fridge. And that's one of the misconceptions. When people come for the first time to, to Palestine, to Israel, to Lebanon, they're absolutely shocked to see how it's served as a dish on its, with its own kind of sense of identity, whether in the selection of meze or served warm with lamb on top or whole chickpeas or falafel on top. It's a whole ceremony. So this is why people feel so strongly about it. It's a, it's a bit like 
it, the equivalent here would be potato or bread. It's a staple, uh, and a staple means that everybody feels very strongly about it. I mean, how, how you should cook it, how you, sure, you, you should eat it. How do you think you should eat it? Um, I think you should eat it definitely not as a main course. Um, just, you know, as an appetizer, just but with the meat start on top, of a meal. No, a... no, I'm, 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 a, I'm a fundamentalist about really? it. I'm a Puritan. I yeah. think you should just have it <laughs> on its own, uh, maybe with a bit, really good, a bit of really good olive yeah. oil and paprika over the top, but that's it. Yeah. Don't mess with the hummus. I, 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 I don't see it that way. And the top tip, <laughs> I mean, should people, should people be making it for well, themselves? Yeah, well, the top tip is that you really need to, to use fresh chickpeas, not canned chickpeas, because yeah. many recipes call for the shortcut, but you really need to soak your own chickpeas and then uh, make it from fresh chickpeas. Okay, no wars here. Thank you no. both very much indeed. <laughs>